What's up, digital charcuterie fans? It's me, Andrew Fantasia. Hi, hello, happy Friday. It's Casual Friday. And today, we're going to be talking primarily about a certain beetle of a certain color. Uh, but first things first, YouTube stuff out of the way. If you like us, if you love us, if you want to take us to the prom or the homecoming dance, click the bell, click the thumbs up, subscribe to us. And hey, if you think I'm okay and you don't totally hate me, maybe check out my book, which is available on Amazon right now. It's a fantasy novel called We Were Wizards. This is part one. There's also a second book already available. It looks like this, right? Okay. Uh, if you love old school, fun fantasy adventure, stuff like Lord of the Rings, uh, stuff like Star Wars, because that is a fantasy at the end of the day, uh, check out We Were Wizards. It's a lot of fun, if I do say so myself. And help a up-and-coming author out, because that's always a nice thing to do. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk DC movies. <gasps> oh no, everybody on YouTube has already started clacking away on their keyboards about how much they either hate or love DC movies, because there really is no in-between when it comes to this uh, property, unfortunately. Uh, I, I want to field a question from a fan who sent in an email, so let's talk about this. Let's go. So this comes from Mary, and Mary writes in asking, Blue Beetle flopped hardcore. Will James Gunn's DC movies bomb also? Thanks for your question, Mary. The short answer is no, but here's why. Uh, there's no fear of James Gunn's DC movies flopping, but here's the deal. Yeah, Blue Beetle didn't make as much money as I think they wanted it to make. Well, but, I mean, we should preface this by saying it's still only been out for, what, a week today, right? It's been out for seven days. Let's give it time to make its money. Let's let good word of mouth start to spread because it is a good movie. I don't think it's a great movie, but it's a good movie. And good word of mouth will get it. Uh, it'll get some butts in the seats. Enough butts to fiscally justify it in the eyes of people like David Zaslav? Probably not. Um, but again, remember, this is a man who thought that girl wasn't financially viable and wrote it off for tax purposes. So I don't think we can take their opinion into account when it comes to whether a movie was worth it at the end of everything. But Blue Beetle has made a smaller amount of money than I think the people in charge wanted to after a week. And a lot of that probably comes down to this one simple fact. And it's a fact that was unavoidable at this point. It is totally 100% unavoidable. And that fact is nobody knows what DC is doing right now, including DC themselves, right? It, it is what it is. Um, we have just been on a roller coaster of Black Adam, Shazam 2, The Flash, and now this. And what has been made abundantly clear to the movie going public, and I, I should preface this with an asterisk, I did not see Black Adam or Shazam 2. So I'm just going by what I have heard. But what has been made clear to the movie going public here is that those movies were so-so at best, at times they promised things that at very quickly DC redacted, such as Henry Cavill Superman coming back. Uh, and it created a sort of stigma around the brand to the point where the brand itself, DC itself is saying only months after Black Adam comes out, uh, that post credit scene from Black Adam, ignore that. In fact, everything about Black Adam, ignore that. Uh, this is nothing now. This is not part of our universe anymore. We are starting fresh, right? They did the same thing with, um, sorry, I have a very noisy chair. They did the same thing with Shazam 2, right? Shazam 2 came out, people saw it, I guess. I have not heard really anything terrible or great about it. It just seemed like a middling average sequel. Um, and whatever world it was setting up and promising doesn't seem like it's part of the plan going forward. 
James Gunn has put a lot of things on the table in terms of what we can expect to see in the new DCU. And the Marvel family is not one of them. Billy Batson, Freddie Freeman, Mary Marvel, that whole thing, they don't seem to be part of this whole thing going forward, at least as far as I can tell, which is a shame because I really like Shazam 1. I thought that was a great film. Um, so right there, you have two movies that are promising stuff and trying to carry forward um, a narrative that at the same time with the other hand, they're holding a flag that says, ignore this narrative. So <laughs> it's very hard for people to invest in that. And then riding in that same jet stream came The Flash, which came with a lot of negative connotivity to it because of Ezra Miller. I am going to admit up front, you know, I am not a fan of Ezra Miller. They have made it very clear that they're not the most <laughs> likable person on earth. But I did really, really like the Flash movie. Just the movie itself as it is, I thought it was awesome. Um, and it's a shame that it had to be headlined by such a controversial, unlikable actor, but say la vie, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, so we have this movie that didn't really do well in terms of uh, love from the fans, love from the public because of Ezra Miller. And then finally, at the end of that comes Blue Beetle, which is a good movie with great people attached who everybody likes. And it's fun and it's endearing and it's got a lot of good stuff going for it. But it has to follow those three acts, right? It has to come out after two things that got silent crickets and one thing that got straight out booze from the audience and then has to come up and be like hey i i'm part of them we're all part of the same act please like me and that's not blue beetle's fault that's just the fault of all these extenuating circumstances it's the fault of zaslav for driving this thing to the ground it's the fault of ezra miller for driving themselves into the ground uh and it's the fault of um, you know people like Walter Hamada and, and Jeff Johns and everybody else involved in the DC Cinematic Universe who just drove it into the ground and made it a thing that was so unsalvageable that they had to cancel it while they were in the middle of their biggest hopeful resurgence that they had going for them. I don't know if that makes sense now that I've said it out loud, but essentially they were really pulling for Black Adam especially and The Flash to change the DC universe in a way that it could carry on and get popular again because it was really losing steam. And Black Adam did it almost kind of with the Superman thing, which says more about Superman than it does about Black Adam. But anyway, and then they canceled the Superman thing right away anyway. So it was very, very hard for fans to care about what they were doing over at DC. And that comes from a guy who loves the DC Comics universe and who loves all of these characters and who was more excited to see them get a cinematic universe than he was even for the Marvel one. And I adore the Marvel one. So the fact that they let it slide to an extent where I am happy that it's ending and starting over shows just how much of a mess they made. Um, so Blue Beetle not making enough cash to justify its existence or whatever is not Blue Beetle's fault. That's the really short answer. It is not Blue Beetle's fault. And anybody out there who wants to check out Blue Beetle out of curiosity or because they love the character or, you know, for whatever reason, I urge you to check it out because it is a fun movie. It, not to turn this into a review or anything, but I did like it. It's not going to blow your mind. It's a very simple story. And I will, I think it's safe to say that Blue Beetle was written with younger teen audiences in mind. It seems very, not juvenile, but it seems to kind of approach it from the standpoint of this can be your kid's first superhero movie. It really does feel like that. It's not as adult, for lack of a better term. It's not as mature as something like, say, Iron Man or 
Captain America, right? It's, or, or even Man of Steel. It's not that kind of movie. It's very much take your kids to this and get them interested in superheroes. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I went with some friends of mine, one of whom she has a kid, a teenage daughter. Uh, and we, you know, she liked it. She thought it was a fun movie. So it, it did its job well. Blue Beetle's a likable guy. I love his family. The stuff with him and his family is the best part of the movie. The superhero-y stuff in that movie is just a little bit, you know, just par. It's, it's, it's fine. It's what you expect. He's got a suit. He's got cool powers with the suit. A rich lady wants the suit. And so she puts a different suit on a bad guy and makes them fight. It's exactly what you think based on the trailers. It's not going to blow your mind. It's not going to give you anything special that you've never seen before. But it is a very sweet, very fun, very charming film. And from the sounds of things, to put a pin in this and to answer Mary's question once and for all here, um, the James Gunn DC Universe really sounds like, and I've heard conflicting reports of this, but it really sounds like James Gunn likes the Blue Beetle pocket of things so much that he's willing and ready to integrate it into what he has planned going forward so that we can get more Blue Beetle sequels and have it all still be part of this new universe, which sounds fantastic to me because they set up a lot of cool stuff in Blue Beetle. But one thing primarily that Blue Beetle did that I love that I think James Gunn is also going to do, uh, this is why I think we haven't seen the last of Blue Beetle and why I think James Gunn stuff is not going to bomb at the box office. So here's your answer, Mary. Blue Beetle, the movie did one thing in particular that was my favorite aspect of it because this thing is my favorite aspect of DC Comics in general, okay? And it's this. Spider-Man, Marvel, all those guys, all the Avengers, they hang out in New York City. That's their thing. You know, some of them live elsewhere. I think Iron Man lives on the West Coast in California, whatever. But New York City is a very Marvel place. DC lives in another world. Yes, it's Earth, it's America, but Metropolis, we're not really sure where that is. It doesn't exist. It's, It's a made up fantasy city. Same with Gotham, right? Uh, And because they're fantasy cities, they can be larger than life. They can have things that real cities don't have. And I'm looking at you, Joel Schumacher Gotham, because you're one of my favorites. Those giant statues with the neon lights, right? And the Tim Burton Gotham. Oh, my God, take me there, right? So I love that about DC. I love how otherworldly its locations can be, while at the same time still feeling more or less like North America. Blue Beetle is set in one of those cities. I can't remember which one. There's a lot of DC cities that, you know, I'm familiar with through the comics. Um, It's not Keystone City, but regardless, it doesn't matter. Blue Beetle is set in one of those DC comic cities that doesn't exist in real life. And because of that, whenever you get um, just establishing geographic shots in Blue Beetle, you get this amazing panorama of a gigantic, colorful neon city. I think it's set either in Southern California or in Florida because uh, there's palm trees. But you get a a palm tree filled city that is bigger than any city on earth with a gigantic skyline and this island uh, to the south of it where uh, it's sort of like the poor district where Blue Beetle's family lives. And that is called the Keys. And it's just it embraces so much the spirit of DC's otherworldliness that none of the other DC movies to my memory have. And that includes all of the recent Batman movies because even they have tried to ground themselves in a reality where Gotham doesn't feel as otherworldly as I would like it to feel. But Blue Beetle doesn't make that same mistake. Blue Beetle embraces the strangeness of the DC world by giving us this beautiful new playground to have fun in and tell stories in. And that's just one city and DC's got a dozen of those, right? So that makes me so damn excited. And if I know James Gunn and I don't, we have never met, but if I know James Gunn and I know the way he operates, he seems like he loves those kinds of things, right? He loves that uh, he can use this playground that is not quite of this earth. 
So based on what we have seen from what he wants to implement in this new DC universe with the creature commandos and all that other stuff, I feel like he's really going to embrace that part of it because that's a crucial piece of DC's identity that we really have not explored in these movies. Um, with the exception of maybe Atlantis um, in the Aquaman movie and like Themyscira obviously in Wonder Woman, they have not touched on just the beautiful strangeness of DC's geographic world. Blue Beetle's the first one that does that. Uh, and with that being the cornerstone of my argument here, I believe that that is going to move forward in so many fun and interesting ways as we dive deeper into James Gunn's DC Cinematic Universe. So Mary, I don't think we can expect Blue Beetle's financial situation to reflect on what is going to happen moving forward with Superman Legacy and onward, but I do think Blue Beetle is going to set a standard of some kind here, at least going forward, that we can adhere to the other movies. And I think it's safe to say Blue Beetle sequels will happen. Or at least Blue Beetle himself will show up again because there is more to tell in this story. And that part of the storytelling aspect, that part of the world building will be very, very present in James Gunn's universe to the point where this is all going to fit in and feel right. And I think Blue Beetle is going to end up, the movie, the first Blue Beetle movie is going to end up being a case where maybe it's going to be the Incredible Hulk of the new DC universe where right now, while it's out in theaters, it feels kind of different. It doesn't feel like it's fitting with what we're being promised moving forward. But in retrospect, years down the line, we're going to look back and we're going to say, this is now a key part of the DC universe. Because James Gunn has, to quote Jean-Luc Picard here, made it so. So that's what I feel. Um, I, I urge everybody to check out Blue Beetle if you haven't already, because it is going to be important to this world one day. And we have the DC world building to thank for that. So thank you for your question, Mary. Thank you all for watching here on Casual Friday. I got to go, but I will see you all shortly, sooner or later on something. Until then, everybody, please have a great day. And may you be the masters of your own universe.